Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habitifillah The question was asked What is the ruling on testing people with certain scholars to establish whether they are upon the sunnah or not? And is there a difference between testing people with scholars of Ahl al-Bid'ah and scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah? Would testing with scholars of Ahl al-Sunnah be permissible but not testing with the scholars of Ahl al-Bid'ah? So in the case of scholars or callers of Ahl al-Bid'ah, it would simply be enough to warn against them without testing individuals with them? I came across some statements in the fantastic book Shara Sunnah by Imam al-Barbahari rahimahullah ta'ala with a commentary by Sheikh Salih bin Fuzan which would seem to show that it is permissible. However, I also came across a chapter in another fantastic book, Rufkan, Ahl Sunnah, Bil Ahl Sunnah, Gentleness, O People of the Sunnah, with the People of the Sunnah, by Allama uh, uh, Abdul Masan al Abad, Hafidullah Ta'ala, called The Heresy of Testing the People by Individuals, would seem to show that it wasn't permissible. This is a huge question and requires a book in and of itself. And we will just give a few fawaid from the ulama and from our studies of these texts and the benefits we've acquired over the years from some of these very ulama. So, in general, there was a testing of individuals, especially when it came to the science of Jarwa Ta'adil, you know, whether to take uh, of uh, hadith from someone, and also between, uh, you know, uh, Ahl Hadith and, and Ahl Sunnah, especially in the past, especially in the early times. So that's why you'll find those statements, many statements uh, in the books of Aqidah and so forth where they tested uh, people from other lands and so forth to see if they knew so and so or what they what their position was with so and so and maybe perhaps even make a hukum upon them so you find that we we don't say that this is not totally from the religion absolutely not in that uh, many of the ulama of the past they use these uh, criterion for testing individuals and uh, Sheikh Salib bin Fozan, I don't know what he said exactly there in Barbahari. I don't have the book in front of me and I don't have the time to really research and go deep, deep into this issue. But I have another one of his statements, which in fact will show you that there is tafsir. That many of these issues are major issues, so there's many details. Meaning that on one hand you will find the ulama, it's not that they're denying in totality, like Sheikh Abdul Masin you mentioned, uh, testing the people, but they see the fitna that has arisen from people who do not know how to test the people. And what I mean by this is now you have so many people who claim Salafiya, some of them are Salafi, some of them are Hizbis, and they will test people based on individuals who are with them. And what I mean by this, I was absolutely shocked many, many years ago when one of the big American du'at died, Allah Yerhamahu, who was known for spreading Salafiyah. And the brothers, some of the brothers from other countries posted on their websites that we used to test the people with this da'i, with this person, that if the people, you know, they were praising the brother and going to such an extent and this is this was incorrect this is plain and simple incorrect and I'm from America I never listened to that brother I heard one clip after he died and I was you know may Allah forgive us in him I was disappointed in his criticism it was just on this tape because it was only I only heard this little bit of tape and he was giving somebody else nicknames and stuff may Allah forgive us in him may Allah forgive us in him may Allah forgive us in him and so I was very disappointed and it shows you how in the world you're going to take a continent like of America and you're going to take one individual who may not even be heard of. You know, America's huge. This is just America. And you're going to test people in the UK based and people who come from America. We used to test them with so-and-so. So it shows you there's been a misuse. And this is what those ulama are making enkar of because it's a very dangerous practice. You can't even say that. Even if I went to China... 
and I went to, or say if I went to Bangladesh, for example, and we know that amongst many Salafi communities in the world, okay, Sheikh Rabi is a known name. He is known and he is uh, generally accepted. If I tested the people in Bangladesh, people who adhere to the Book of Allah and the Son of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is everyone going to know that Sheikh and are you going to make Hajar of him? And, no. So it shows you there's a problem, there is tension with trying to apply this, this uh, principle in every context. There are times when it is permissible if you need, if you need to, if there's a Hajar. And this is what I understand from ulama without giving you the whole shit so and so. But also we've translated and it's on this web page, uh, this uh, YouTube about this is issue. So I urge you for those, for the one who asked this to go back on my YouTube page and make a search about testing individuals. You'll find statements of the ulama and you'll find translated uh, questions I've asked Sheikh Saeed, which are there. It's It's been done. So to let you know that there are some circumstances, but that's not the origin that you go around testing people. And now, now let's look to uh, uh, what Sheikh Salim bin Fozan himself, who seemed in one text to say that this was okay, if, if, as, he, as you're saying to me. But here's a direct text from Sheikh Salim bin Fozan about this fitna. He said, he was asked, they said, O virtuous Sheikh, there is a phenomenon amongst the young ones and it is testing of people with individuals. So if you agree with the one testing you are from Ahl Sunnah, if you oppose him, then you are an innovator. What is your advice concerning this? Imam Fozan said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, the advice is that one who agrees with the book of the uh, and the Sunnah, then he is from Ahl Sunnah, in Tahina, without looking at individuals, except Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So we do not follow anyone except the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. There was for you and the messenger of Allah a good example. And as for other than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then he who follows the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then we try to emulate him or try to be like him. And he who opposes the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then we oppose the person. So the one who is to be followed is the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And due to this, Shaykh Islam Rahimullah Ta'ala said, he who alleges that it is obligatory to follow a person other than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he is made to repent. And if he does not, this is because he has affirmed that there is a person other than the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is to be followed. And we do not test the people with individuals, rather we test them with the book and the sunnah. And following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you test someone, test them with the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because it is he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who is obligatory to follow and be like. I was going to mention some other statements from Sheikh uh, Farqos in... Uh, Algeria, and there's so many other, we could go to Sheikh Abdul Masin and Sheikh Zali Suhaimi, and many Mashaykh that speak about this issue. And I think after that statement, it's not necessary. After we heard what Sheikh, Sheikh, uh, Sheikh Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said, you should repent if you are doing this practice, if you are saying someone, for example, if I say to you, you have to follow Sheikh Rabia, and trust me, there are many people who say this. There are people who say this, and I've been in the houses with how many people who said this. And I said, Sheikh, I said, that's our Sheikh. We love the Sheikh. I have all of his books. I love him. But I don't say that. I don't say he doesn't make mistakes. I don't follow him in everything, especially as I'm gaining more knowledge. I don't do that. No, I don't blind follow that. I don't blind follow every hukum he makes on an individual. So then what about less than him? What about what about the statement? And I made the video about it, about the, 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 the website, the marriage website, and they said you have to be on what the Maktaba Salafia in Birmingham is on, and if not, you're out of the group. Whoa, that's deep right there. That's deep to Asab and blind following to those who are not like the ulama, nothing like the ulama. And I don't think they would say that they're like the ulama. They will say we take from the ulama. So it shows you this is a dangerous practice because a lot of these practices, like Hajjah, for example, the people don't know how to practice it. And I'm talking about even students of knowledge. There's a lot of students, they are so hasty. What? Oh, you saw he had a Bilal Phillips book on his shelf? Make Hajjah of him. Oh, he listened to Abu Osama Dhabi one time? Hajjah. Oh, 
uh, make tibdiyah, this one, because he doesn't uh, make, uh, he doesn't blind follow what we've translated for him. You see how absurd it's become? And so, Ahabatif Allah, it's very important to stick with the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi and busy yourself with those things which uh, are of importance, not those things which will busy you from uh, from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the questioner also sent another question and said, uh, I just wanted to ask, would this all apply to testing with books? For example, testing with the fantastic book of Sheikh Salih bin Fasan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, Ejwiba uh, Mufida An Asila Manahij al Jadida. As the, the noble Sheikh Abdulaziz ibn Yahya al Bari, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of our Yemeni Mashaykh, said, No one loves this book except a Sunni, and no one accepts this book except a Sunni. The more you study, you have to put things into context. Statements like this that are made by the ulama, they're not to be taken ala itlaq. Because there's no way you can test people and say, oh, if you read, if you don't accept this book in totality, you're a mubtadiya. So these are general, a general praise. And, and from knowing and having listened to Sheikh Abdulaziz Bari, meaning I don't know the Sheikh, but I've listened to him and seen him in lectures in Yemen. Only on a few occasions. Uh, but what I will say is that you don't take these statements, you have to put them in their rightful place. And this is the problem. Sometimes when the ulama make a general statement and the people don't have the tools to be able to understand and decipher, they take those statements as if it's a, a ruling. You know, this is a general praise of that book saying it's very beneficial, it's going to give you tools. But to say, Allah that if you don't accept that, you're not a Sunni to infer from the Shaykh's statement that this is what it means, you're not Salafi, that's problematic. And there are so many, even though that's a very beneficial book, there are other books that, you know, when people say statements greater than this in praise, and the people take it out of context and then make rulings on individuals. So the best is as Sheikh Salah ibn Fuzan and as Imam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala and so many ulama have mentioned is to not busy yourself with these types of issues. And even when you hear it from other individuals, don't pay it much heed because it's a dangerous thing, especially if you don't have the tools to know how to deal with these major messiah. These are major messiah. You don't need as a general Muslim or a beginning student of knowledge, you don't need to test anyone. Unless it's a situation, you go to a foreign country, you're going to pray in a masjid, you don't know anything in the imam, you might have to, you might test him because maybe it's a, a locality that's known for Sufis that pray to the dead. And this has happened. I've prayed in different places in Ethiopia that I didn't know. And in certain places in Hera and other places which are known Sufi capitals. But alhamdulillah, I generally was able to find somebody from Ahl Sunnah and pray somewhere that was a, a, a you know, a, a masjid that was not making istighatha from amwat. But you'll find many masajid there that it's written on the wall. People make pilgrimage to where the tabi'i, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, uh, Najashi, radiallahu ta'ala where he, his, his village or where his body is alleged to be, King Najashi, who met Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een, who, who the muhajireen went to. There, if you go to that place, I've never been to it, I've seen enough pictures, people make pilgrimage to that place all the time. And they pray to him, and they circumambulate his grave, and they glorify his grave. If I recall, it's a big tomb, and they they make pilgrims, make a rehla to that. So, testing a person in a place, if you were in that village, you would probably want to know if the imam supplicates to the dead or not, to know if you, if you're praying behind someone whose prayer is even valid or not. So there are times, but it's putting in the context. It's not testing the people. Oh, what's your position on the, on the brothers in Philly? What's your position about the Sa'afika? What's your position? Come on. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. The only thing I said that was correct, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, anything I said that was incorrect, I'll throw myself to Shaitan, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ala Nabiya Muhammad.